it's very sort of neutral damp grassland. It's a, once again, it's a quite a broad sort of category that sort of encompasses quite a wide range of things. But I think for a lot of people, the um, what they will sort of frequently encounter is the sort of the type of sort of um, neutral damp grassland where rushes are quite sort of um, prominent. And uh, so as you sort of go into a field, uh, it won't necessarily be occupying the whole field, but you'll see these sort of darker, darker areas. Closer examination, you know, show that there are rushes. So as we're walking across this field, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we're seeing straight away on this side is that uh, Suddenly we've got quite an abundance of meadow foxtail and uh, also we can see that it's actually gone sort of, you know, a little bit sort of in a darker green on this side and uh, we can now start to see that there's sort of a few rushes, you know, appearing as well. So uh, it's sort of telling me once again, you know, within this field, you know, we've got sort of, um, neutral pasture uh, to our left as we're sort of coming across, we're seeing a change and uh, the sort of darker coloration, it suggests to me that we've got damper conditions and then as you get closer you can see straight away that we've actually got some rushes here and uh, we'll look a little bit more closer as we go a bit further down. Not always, and uh, I, you know, I think we'll probably see that uh, you know today in the you know, bit that we're going to look at. Quite clearly, you can see that it uh, you know is wet um, for a lot of the time of the year. But uh, generally speaking, it's uh, in sort of you know the damp neutral grassland. What we've actually got is you know fluctuations in the water table rather than sort of water constantly sort of moving through. So, uh, and that's quite a distinction really between sort of uh, flushes. Uh, you know, another main distinction from flushes, they, they would, you know, there would be sort of um, a lot of sort of bryophytes would be a particularly important component, uh, and you would not tend to see that in uh, the majority of the categories that would fall into neutral damp grassland. is tufted hair grass, so very coarse grass, you know, with ribbed, ribbed leaves. And uh, other sort of common associates, you know, would be sort of Yorkshire fog and uh, possibly rough, rough meadow grass as well. And, uh, and red, red fescue sometimes will be you know, associated with them as well. And I think, uh, you know, depending on how it's actually sort of, you know, being managed, whether it's grazed or not, uh, a range of the sort of other sort of herbs that you know we might expect to see in sort of neutral pastures and meadows you know will sometimes still be present uh, but generally speaking you know it's an abundance of you know, sort of rushes and uh, tufted hair grass is one example and probably the example that a lot of people um, you know would th that's the, what the type that they're actually going to encounter and it's that you know that dark green colour very often will pick it out. And also, if you're in a pasture field, the preferential grazing as well. Um, Tufted hair grass is very coarse, and so very often you know you know it will be bypassed. So certainly later in the season, you can go into a field and uh, see these sort of large areas where you know, the vegetation's not been grazed. It's very dark green. And uh, you know, as soon as you go in, the chances are that's what you'll find. You know, you've got sort of damp, damp neutral grass in those places. And here we've got the very pretty bugle.
damp neutral grassland sort of encompasses these sort of you know uh, grasslands which you know seasonally they, they, they stand actually quite wet and then once again another sort of characteristic species you know showing the damp conditions but you know which you would also find in um, neutral pastures but here as well it's obviously creeping buttercup which you know always you know always got its feet somewhere where it tends to keep a little bit you know, slightly damper species that we would expect to still also find in our neutral pastures and meadows. But, uh, so we've got um, meadow buttercup and then over here as well we've got a, a common sorrel and also you know, some of the grass species but what's actually defining this is the, the, the rushes and the tufted hair grass. But also what we're seeing here is that uh, because like neutral pastures, a neutral damp grassland can encompass a range of sort of, you know, um, conditions as well. We're actually seeing a little bit of acidic influence here and uh, we're seeing that is that uh, there is quite a lot of lesser spearwort and uh, easily missed amongst the, the, the other buttercups. We've got some flowering here and uh, just locally it actually becomes quite frequent and uh, other sort of species which once again characteristic of the, the damp conditions in neutral pastures common birds fit trefoil is very often a, you know an important characteristic species and here we've got greater birds fit trefoil which once again is a species that's marking those damp conditions it helps to actually separate between the two, two grassland types. Mm -hmm. 